What's up world? This is Swedish Gringo and I'm back and ready to travel. Let's just hope that travel is ready for me. This will be my first attempted trip since the coronavirus hit and this time we'll be going to Iceland. A beautiful cold country that hasn't suffered that hard in the pandemic but still has pretty tight rules about entering. My joker card is this one. I've tested myself for COVID-19 and I have immunity. Let's just hope that will be enough. I'll just slip this one on and then all we can do is hope and pray. To be allowed inside Iceland, you have to pass a COVID-19 test when you land. If you fail, you'll be sent to a 14-day quarantine. By the way, if you're a snooze addict, get rid of the evidence. Iceland has strange laws about tobacco. At least I made it on board. Let's hope this lucky streak continues. There's a surprising number of passengers on this plane. And whatever you do, don't remove the mask. It has to stay on the entire trip. Also, to minimize the risk of exposure, most airlines have withdrawn the drink service on board. So bring your own and try to suppress the anguish of perhaps getting locked inside a Corona hotel for two weeks. And then the moment of truth strikes. Show your document for the planned corona screening and get in line, but keep distance. Uh -oh. The process is quick but nerve-wracking. So that wasn't very pleasant. What they do is basically they take a sample from your mouth which isn't that bad, they're just going a bit down there. But the one taken from your nose, I mean, they're shoving like a spiky thing all the way in there. And it hurts. I'm gonna need my last snooze to get over this one. After this refined torture, you're allowed to exit the airport awaiting the results. Ah. Oh. That feels so good! Whew. Transport options are ample and expensive. I fell for the mid-budget option. Airport bus with delivery at the doorsteps of your hotel. Reykjavik may be Iceland's capital, hosting about half the population, but it's really just a small town. And due to the corona crisis, the streets feel almost deserted. Normally this time of year, tourists would be fighting to get seats at the restaurants. Enjoy the luxury of being the only person at the church square and say hi to the Viking king who discovered America. Having a waffle is optional. It doesn't really feel that Icelandic, but they're damn good. Also, 
Don't forget to take that extra 15 minute walk outside the city to get a glimpse of what's surrounding Reykjavik. Extraordinary rough nature. Uh oh, it's that one text of destiny. Saying I passed the test and I'm free to roam the land. Yes, the vacation lives on. It only took an impressive five hours to get the notice. Iceland, you rock. Got a few hours to spend? Visit Reykjavik's oldest thermal pool bathhouse, Sundhullin. Just get rid of all those warm winter clothes and dress down to beachwear. There are a number of different pools, of which the biggest one has a regular temperature. That's not for you. Keep walking to reach the 39 degrees Celsius recuperation pools on the terrace. Wanna go even hotter? Challenge yourself with the swim in the notorious lava pool. But please, don't stay in longer than 15 minutes. Most people, however, hang out in the main thermal area on the ground floor. Its different options should be nice and relaxing for an hour or two. The whole visit, including your locker, will cost a mere $7. Yeah, I know, you don't really care about no damn bathhouse. You want to see the Blue Lagoon. So, let's go. Let's do this. And hell yeah, it looks way better without all the tourists. Normally I would advise you to skip this particular place because of the price and the crowds, but things have changed. Holy crap. This place used to be packed with people. And I'm here all on my own. Normally, there would be about 1,500 tourists at one time at this particular time of year. Yesterday, the count here was four. Another empty part of the lagoon. I think I could get used to this. During lockdown, staff also took the opportunity to change that old dirty water. The blue hot paradise has never been this clean. It's so quiet now, even birds have taken refuge in the lagoon. All of the very few people you see here are basically locals. They wouldn't come in normally because of the hefty prices, but now they have a huge discount. As my cab driver said, the Icelanders can finally enjoy their own country. What? You've never seen a guy with a face mask before? Come on! Number of problems right now? Zero. Don't climb the rocks. It's just, when you're alone, you can do pretty much whatever you want. Stay hydrated, folks. This couldn't be much better. And supposedly, the water is also good for your beard. All right, I've been here like four hours now. Maybe it's time to call it a day. The whole visit, including transport, a drink and a face mask, cost me a total of $75. Day 
three now and this is literally the first sun I've ever seen since I came here to Iceland. Man, I can't believe I'm saying this. I kind of miss Swedish summer. And that, my friends, calls for a beer. Next stop on your trip should be one of Iceland's iconic landmarks. Not all of them are open, but Geyser, the country's most famous squirting geyser, is still there for you. More interesting than the actual geyser is the landscape around it reminding of fantasy movies. This is supposed to be smelling like fart or something, but because of my former corona, I can't smell it then. Be sure to set aside some time to climb the hill behind Geyser. The view will reward you big time. Gazer was part of a three-stop trip, so I can't really give you a price. The whole trip cost 80 bucks. Next comes the second stop, Gullfoss. There she is! Gullfoss is neither the biggest nor the tallest waterfall in Iceland, but certainly the most spectacular. The name translates to the Golden Falls. Be prepared to get wet. Yeah, this is what I call a waterfall. Shopping will probably not be your favorite pastime in Iceland. The prices are in the absolute top tier of the world. A chocolate bar, a Coke and a pack of cigarettes will set you back $16. So make sure to enjoy them. Due to the COVID-19 situation, there is a chance to make a few bargains though. Some restaurants have special Corona deals, such as this kick-ass Big Lebowski themed hamburger restaurants. Yep, I ate here every day. I did mention Iceland is not the warmest country, right? Most likely weather, steel grey skies, perhaps some rain and chilling wind. As a Swede, I always make fun of people wearing winter jackets when it's summer outside. Here in Iceland, it's, uh, it's 12 degrees and some people are walking in t-shirts. Which makes me question if I'm really Viking after all. Hearing the song, we are traveling to a truly epic place. This area is where the Viking leaders met in the early days to settle their arguments and make law. This landscape so well from Game of Thrones. This is gonna be awesome! I guess this place would be packed with people. I guess Corona did bring something good with it. Tingvellir was the third and final stop on my Golden Circle tour. Despite its small size, Reykjavik has a solid nightclub scene, especially under normal circumstances. Yep, they got pinball. 
I said you knew what to do with all those coins. And it's all happening along the main avenue, La Gevegur. Iceland may also be one of the few countries still allowing dance floors. And for all you snooze lovers, a minor clarification. It might be that the nicotine non-tobacco ones are illegal in Iceland now, but if you're not sure, if you're ditching your snooze before you leave in home, this is where you find the new ones. <laughs> yeah, Drakken. Let's uh, let's try it out. That's the one you're going for. That's a good one. Actually, asked the clerk, and he doesn't know as well. So we're still left in the dark about whether white snows is legal or not coming into Iceland. Just do your snooze before you come here. That's all from Iceland. And also the last trip I currently have planned. Let's all sit down in silent prayer for that evil COVID-19 to leave us the f alone. Until then, take care.